Hey there, we hope you're enjoying this first episode of Heat Wave. If you'd like to support us, you can do so at patreon.com slash half empty tank and there you'll actually get access to our episodes before anyone else. Hey and welcome back, I'm Brian Belcher, and for our last segment, we're going to talk about what our favorite game for 2019 was. Um, just to go ahead and give us a jumping off point, I actually, I'm, I, I'm, I'm having trouble deciding between two different games here, so we can put it up to discussion a bit. Uh, it's between uh, The Outer Worlds and The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for me. But I kind of feel like Link's Awakening doesn't count because it's also a 22-year-old game. No, you can't do that because I'm going to be doing a similar thing here. Oh, shit. So. Oh, oh. <laughs> so let's, oh, I know let's what you're picking. determine some ground rules. Okay. Is it a game that was released in 2019? Yes. Yeah. Or a game that you played in 2019? Uh, released in 2019. It's a game okay. from 2019. Uh, the Outer Worlds. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that like... Well, here's another question. How many games ha- from 2019 have you played? I, it's not many for me. I've only played one game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we know what you're and doing. And that was kind of like the reasoning why I came up with a resolution to play more video games because I looked at the entire <laughs> list of all of the games released in 2019 and I had not played any of them except for one game. Yeah. And I was like, well, I guess that's the game I'm picking. I think I've probably only played two or three games that were released in 2019 yeah. for a concerted amount of time and one of them was Final Fantasy VIII. I like mean, technically, it was released this year yeah. on yeah. Switch, so. So my game, I'll just go ahead and go because this is the only answer I have, is Untitled Goose Game. Yeah. That's the only mm. game I played this year. It's the only game I, like, really cared about this year. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to, like, be a goose and fuck people's shit up. And that's a good one. That's it's exactly a great what game. you could do. And flap so, and honk. Yeah, that's, that was my pick for this year. That was one of my favorite games that came out this year, mm-hmm. uh, with the exception of the fact that I did, uh, I spent seven and a half fucking hours getting every single item in that game into one spot and i had four items left and it crashed and it did not save either. it did it not just, save like, so it's all gone well to be fair like people told you that they it did. was gonna do that yeah too, yeah so. i tried it though you, I was kept, like, you were oh. like mm, let me get it i don't care oh, well, my favorite part it was like uh, around the end it was just going at like six frames per second too yeah it was like oh, God. like, like really there were gross. too many objects rendered or in something. one yeah, place in yeah. one place yeah, they were not where they're supposed to be. I took every movable object I could in the game. You just stressed the game spot. out too much. I yeah. feel like though, that they probably would have done that in QA. Well, it works on the PC version. I think oh, the problem okay. is the Switch is uh, limited on gotcha. what it can do. Yeah, sometimes. Gotcha. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but I want to give a, a special shout out to Shin Move for actually releasing. Yeah. Um, I thought you were about to say for actually shipping. And I was about to come over there and punch you. <laughs> <laughs> How dare. Um, no, Shinmu was it, on the Dreamcast. That doesn't count. It that's true. This year. Shinmu 3. Shinmu 3, uh, Shinmu 3 for those who want a clarification. Uh, and shout out for that for being a game from 2002. Or what, when, when, when did it come out? Was it 99? 2001. 2001? Ah, yeah. close. Mm. Uh, my actual pick, though, is Resident Evil 2. Uh, that game, uh, it... It feels familiar and different all at the same time. I didn't realize they re-released. They did a they yeah. did a huge remaster of Resident yeah. Evil Two. That's awesome. oh no, it, it is, is a remake, yeah, a proper yeah. remake. Oh, okay, um, but like for example, um, uh, so one of the things uh, that in, in the, check it, that out in I, the yeah, yeah, so in the original there are two routes: the A and B route that you can do. In the A route, you fight against um, William Birkin, um, and in the second route. Uh, you were getting chased by Mr. X, which is basically Nemesis, like an a nemesis or whatever. Um, and uh, in this game, uh, you start out, you know, your first playthrough is a route, and then you get to the hallway, and then all of a sudden, boom, Mr. X is just right there. And you're just, just like, well, he's not supposed to be here. What's going on? Uh so it threw some some wrenches into the gears. So that it, seems it was, like an interesting way to do a remake. Um, and present like the same original content, but then um, provide enough for people who've played it a hundred thousand times, like I imagine there are. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, to to still get something out of it. Yeah, I mean it's it was one of the most successful games of the year, and on top of that, like to the point that I get it's quasi announced that uh, Resident Evil Three is also getting a remake now. Yeah, which I'm excited about because that's my favorite Resident mm-hmm. Evil. Hmm. So I'm going to I'm uh, I'm probably going to get that one. 
That one's oddly enough, I only ever played it once. I beat it, and yeah, then I yeah. didn't pick it up again. Yeah. But it was I remember it being a good game. Uh, so. I played it. It was the only one. I, it was my first Resident Evil. So Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Cool. I played it with a friend, and we just passed the controller, and I was bad at it, so he held on to it more often. Mm. But uh, it was really, it was like one of those, like, oh, we're going to play this for three days straight kind of game. Yeah, I haven't honestly played a lot of Resident Evil. It's my, uh, you know, I, I appreciate <clears throat> the franchise, but scary games or even like, even like horror themed games right. aren't my thing normally. Yeah. But th- when, that one's just campy as hell. Uh, oddly enough, like horror movies are not my thing. Yeah. Especially gory horror movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, but I'm totally I'm fine with it in games game. unless it's like super like insane. So, I tried to play a Resident Evil game. Which one did I try to play? You tried to play the first remake on GameCube. And I could not get the controls. Like, yeah, I could tank, not make tank the was You and Juggle Boy like, would have a fun conversation about how like, much tank control sucked. The person would like, and the camera angles are weird because you'd move into a different room and then the camera would like change suddenly. And yeah. like, I was just like in the corner, like walking, like couldn't get out of it. Mm-hmm. Was, I don't know where I it am. It was or, terrible. Yeah. Like, like, I just couldn't play it. So, so the remaster gives you an option to move anywhere. It takes away the tank controls. Okay. And it's it's serviceable except for one scene. be um, able to play that then. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, this just goes back to I just need to play more games. So like, hey, if there's a game that you guys think that I should play from 2019, let me know in the comments. Yeah, yes. yeah. So um, I think me and you are on the same boat. Uh, Outer Worlds was definitely one yeah. of the... Uh, it's for me. It was a surprise hit. For a, um, I didn't know it was coming. I thought yeah. it, when everyone was talking about it, I saw that there was a game called The Outer Wilds, and I was confusing it. Yeah. And then on top of that, I was like, "Oh, it's Obsidian. Oh, it's a Fallout game." Yeah. Oh, I'm playing it now. Yeah. And then I, I was lucky enough. I have the Xbox Game Pass, so yeah. it's free for me. Yeah. Um, and it sucked me in. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I put about twenty hours into that within about. Four yeah, days. You were playing yeah. it. Jeez. Like every day, you'd come home from work and you would just play it. Like, yeah, for I had, hours. so I would, I, I'm going to say that's probably my game of the year. Zelda was also that, but I didn't beat Zelda. I got very close. I'm on the last dungeon. Okay, but yeah. Outer World sucked me in. Um, a friend of ours recommended it to me because mm. I was like trying to figure out. I was trying to find something <clears throat> interesting to play, and um, I was thinking about getting Red Dead Two and. Uh, decided not to instead went with Outer Worlds. Yeah. Um, and the writing's just phenomenal. Oh, man. Uh, I forgot what her name is, but the first, like, companion character that you get. Yeah. She's amazing. Harvali. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, my God. The See, internet uh, loves her now. Well, I didn't realize any of that. And um, when I played, I was streaming it the first time. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to be as evil as I can. So I just killed everyone else in that whole town. Yeah. And then she still was following me around. It was all like happy go lucky. And it was the most like opposite yeah. kind of thing. But oh man, that game. What was really great about her though was that there was so much more representation with her. Yeah. And I've only been able to find one male companion so far. Is there another one? I've got two. Okay, so I'm missing one companion then. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I like. Uh, if you haven't played or heard of Outer Worlds, it's a Fallout game, but if the apocalyptic event was corporations rather than <laughs> nuclear weapons. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of... I kind of love that, though. Yeah, it's it's really interesting, and it's yeah. really cool, and I think it's timely for a lot of the stuff that yeah, we're thinking about. I feel like we're thinking about. approaching that, maybe. Yeah, With some it's, companies, they're a little scary the way they are buying up everything, and we're like, wow, they're going to own don't talk the about entire world. Amazon, Apple, <laughs> Alphabet. Well, I wasn't going to list everybody. <laughs> uh, well, it was pro, it's proto-cyberpunk. Yeah. Hello. It oh, is. <laughs> <laughs> we have a new, new podcast mate. Hello, Beans. What was your favorite game of 2019? He's gone. Nothing to say. <laughs> Just, uh, there's so many to choose from. Lint, I get it. Lint on the ground. Wait, 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 wait. What was that? Death Stranding? Wow. <laughs> that that is a sleeper choice. I do like a hot dose of Kojima bullshit. So I have yet to play that game. Yeah. I cannot wait to play that game. That, so I have been playing it, but I'm not very far in it. But okay. it's it's weird. I mean, obviously, but. <laughs> um, it, it's basically just t- picking up things and taking it from point A to point B yeah, and hope yeah. you don't get fucked up. By- but, it's, but it's like there there are layers of uh, inventory management optimization to it that mm-hmm. some of our more pedantic Ooh. friends would really enjoy. 
Um, yeah, it's oh, and they, there is an option to just like auto like arrange everything, and it, it just makes things flow better. I'm thankful it's there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of glad to hear that because I don't like the core mechanic behind this. Give me a control option that takes it away. <laughs> I didn't realize though you can actually like put things on like his arms and his legs, so he just looks like a trash robot. Uh, basically, yeah. Um, I kind of want to play this now. You so, get to collect things, you say? Oh yeah. And uh, so my, one of my favorite things is like if you overload him with like stuff that he can barely lift up. Like he has a little cutscene where he you leave his terminal and he's he's just. Oh, 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 and he almost falls back it's and like stuff. So he's just like hating life. And it's oh, it's so wait. great just to watch him. Oh, wow, Norman Reed is just gruff. That's actually one of the things I'm going to get now that it's the new year. I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have to get that. It's game. got a lot of dumb things You want to play a game in. called Porter Bridges, who is a porter who works for a company called Bridges, <laughs> building bridges and carrying things? Yes, I do. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> I mean, Kojima's always been one of my favorites, but yeah. my, my main concern with that game was that the gameplay wasn't going to be up to par that I'm used to with like yeah. the Metal Gear series. Metal Gear 5, for example, I, I've always loved Kojima, but that game was... I could play that game forever, even if it wasn't very weird. Mm -hmm. I loved what Even it if it wasn't very weird, <laughs> there's a certain weird quotient that I expect from you, Hideo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this uh, isn't weird enough. Get out of here, Snatchers. I've actually started playing that recently for the first time. <gasps> it's really fucking good. Oh. Um, I wanted to play that. I yeah, like we should. Uh, I've got it. Uh, I got a. I got a version of it. So, mm. hell yeah. The only Snatchers I know is we have the soundtrack in a long box at work. <laughs> yep. Mm. And I constantly have to get those because it's part of the PAX bundle at LimitedRunGames.com. <laughs> wow, they don't sponsor us, Brittany, even though they paid they, me. They do sponsor us. Technically, yeah. I got, I got the sponsorship. Oh yeah. I Awesome. Right, cool. <laughs> Let me know. Yeah, that was, I think that was the first Kojima was Snatchers. Is it? No, well, Metal is it Gear Place 1 Nots? and 2 were his first games. No, I thought Snatchers came out before that. Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 are what you're thinking of. Metal Gear 1 and 2 on the NES and MGS oh, okay. were before yeah. Snatchers. M MSX? MSX. You're yeah. right. I thought Snatchers was on like the fucking Commodore or something. So, um... I think it was a DOS game originally. It was a DOS game originally. And then uh, he got, because of how successful Metal Gear 1 and 2 were, that they gave him full reign to oh, be able to make... Oh, Snatchers was the first time that happened for yeah. him. Uh -huh. And he was like, weird. Yeah. And they're like, all right, this still works. It, it, it <laughs> bombed, so he went back to Metal Gear and then... Womp. Then he just was yeah. like, I'm still going to be weird here. I don't give a shit. A friend of mine who is a game developer um, described Death Stranding to me as... I mean, it's Hideo Kojima. You know what you're getting. But it's Hideo Kojima where he doesn't have a boss to tell him that things aren't... Like, things don't make sense. Mm -hmm. And also, he is the boss saying that things don't make sense. Okay. So, can I mention a quote that Juggle Boy told me? One of his friends mentioned who's beaten the game. He said that, uh, you, I can thoroughly say that David Cage is a better writer than Hideo Kojima. And okay. I was like, Ooh. I was like, what? <laughs> okay. So, apparently, it goes places... Yeah, All right. of course it does. But it, probably in the last twenty minutes, but, um, or what you think is the last twenty minutes, it kicks off like a three-hour cutscene, and mm -hmm. so it was all info from, dense. From what I've heard, it doesn't beat his record for Metal Gear Solid Four, which is the longest cutscene in any game. What? How long is it? Uh, I believe it was uh, forty-eight minutes. Is how long the mm. cutscene is. But here's mm. the thing: in Metal Gear Solid Four, when that happens, there's like four <clears throat> minutes of gameplay, and then another half hour cutscene right after that. Right after it. Oh right gosh. after that. That's crazy. You gotta have your checkpoint in there. Gotta right? have your checkpoint Ugh. for the bathroom break. I mean, I imagine like if you knew about it ahead of time, you could like tuck in and be like, "Okay, this is here buckle comes. up." But when you're playing a game like that, you don't generally know what's going to yeah. happen. So it's just like, wow. Oh, that happened to me with Metal Gear Solid 2. Oh, Same. Go yeah. Same. somewhere. I thought I was about to beat the game, and I was. Yeah. But it was like 2 a.m., and I had to go to school the next yep. day. And I just was like, not going to school. Me and, <laughs> me and, me and a buddy of mine uh, rented it okay. from Player's Choice Ooh. and stayed up for Ooh. 24 hours playing it and like trading off. Yeah. So when we got to the, the final cutscene situation, we were groggy as hell. Yeah. Yeah. A little loopy. And it was like, okay. Oh, it's still gone, huh? <laughs> 
All right. Let's watch this mini movie. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of weird iconography. Okay. <sighs> I'm really enjoying that we've talked about the best game of the year. We all had best games of the year. None of them were Death Stranding, but half of this entire segment was about Kojima. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... We just got to stop. I mean, that's just the way the conversation... Yeah, no, no, I'm not mad. But with that, we are actually at the end of this segment. There it is. Oh, there you go. So, guys, uh, thank you so much for... uh, Wow, that was our first episode. I know. Tuning in for our very first episode. We'll be back next week with even more episodes of Heat Wave. Uh, Who knows what might happen. Uh, More topics. Uh, There might be a video game one. And we'll see you guys then. See Bye, ya. everybody. Oh, hey, like, subscribe, comment, all that. Smash like that. <coughs> um, do we now want to record a thing where you explain the format and how things will go up as like a teaser thing? <coughs> yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Channel trailer. All right, channel trailer. Ugh. Hey, welcome, everybody. We're going to explain <laughs> what the hell Heat Wave is. Uh, just so everyone knows, if you would like to join us, uh, and get the heat wave as early as possible, the best way to do that is to become a patron of us on, uh, patreon.com slash half empty E tank. You'll be able to get the entire episode on Sunday before an e- before, anybody else. before anyone else. Let's try that again. Let's uh-huh. say like what heat wave is. <laughs> okay. How we're releasing it. Okay. And then end with. The Patreon. Okay. Because it means nothing at the front of it. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Hi! Welcome to this weird discussion we're about to have about the logistics of heat wave. <laughs> hey kids, you like logistics? You like the logistics? I love uh, charts. <laughs> Especially when they flow. <laughs> if you want to know what's about to happen here, we're going to have a segment release every week, uh, an episode release every week, and then we're going to split them up in segments so that you're going to get Jairus' uh, segment. episode released every week, right? Yeah. Yes. I, 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 I went back, but we can... <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have an episode release <laughs> at the end of every week. That's right. Uh, but throughout the week, we're going to be releasing the component parts of it as segments on YouTube. That's right. Um, so you can watch them independently if you care more about one thing or wait until they're all live mm-hmm. and watch it all in one sitting. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you can download it as a podcast if you would prefer that uh, rather than having a YouTube tab open. Um, and if you want to support us, uh, we have Patreon at patreon.com slash, slash half empty e tank. Okay. Um, and our Patreon subscribers will get access earlier. Mm-hmm. It'll to be the final thing. That's right. So on Sunday, if you're a Patreon supporter, you get the entire episode, uh, access to the entire video episode or the audio podcast. That day, Ooh. heat it's wave. A, it's a good deal. It's an experiment with monetization using timed release. That's right. Uh, on <laughs> no one's done it before. Every single Monday, we'll be releasing Jairus's segment. Uh, uh, every single time, uh, every single Monday. After every Tuesday, Brittany's, I get Tuesdays. You get Tuesdays. Yay! And then on Wednesdays, Hutch's segment goes out. Wednesday's my day. And on That's Thursday, true. my segment will go out. And on Friday, it. The entire podcast is available uh, for everyone, everywhere, always, always, always. for free. If you want to give us monies, though, you know that would be really cool. That's neat. We yeah. like money. We yeah. like money. We like money. I mean, please give us money. Yeah. <laughs> Hutch, now you have to start every episode with "It's Wednesday, my dude." <laughs> yes, I'm totally doing that. <laughs> But it's only Wednesday on this segment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thank you so much. If you have any uh, questions or whatnot, please leave something in the comments. And, you know, there's a like button and subscribe button or wherever the hell this podcast is available. You know, RSS feed. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. And we'll be, we'll come back with you with more information later after we figure it out. Yeah, because we're recording before <laughs> the internet we do it. is weird and confusing. It yep. really is. Just like the World us. Wide Web. Yeah. Information Highway. <laughs> Hypertext transfer protocol secure colon backslash backslash www.youtube.com slash 
half empty E tank. You've it's got actually a half empty energy tank. They wouldn't let me change that. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. bye.